So very quick, very easy. Again, I had that uh, in that particular node set up. I have another one that I've got set up that's 90 degrees. So if I unplug this and say, let's go uh, here and here. So now every 90 degrees. So again, it's just one of those things. I know math people, we're, we're, we're a dying breed because we have computers in front of us. It's like, this is be able to do it. it. Trust me, it gives you a lot more control. And surely one of you knows another geek that knows math and can help you out with some of this stuff as you get going. Save the nodes, keep them. That's, that's one of the powers. Uh, you know, save up your own libraries, use them, use them and be happy. Now, this will give me a chance too as we start winding it. I was doing coloring on those trees where I was just changing the leaves a color. Wow. Okay, that's, that's worthy, that's worthy. But if we're dealing with a car, we might actually be dealing with a better type of a shader. Maybe we're talking about one of our material shaders. So again, node editor. And if I bring in my instance, my instance node here. So what I want to do now is I want to apply a material. This is more than just a color. This is something that actually replaces everything. This is going to replace color, specular, diffuse, all of this stuff. So if I add, I've actually very handily have a material that's called car paint. Kind of custom made for this, isn't it? So if I were to plug this material into my material input and I was dealing with VPR, we would see that these are now using that material to get a nice cherry car paint shade. Well, but what I want to do is I, I don't want a whole fleet of red, well, maybe I do want a whole fleet of red 57 Chevys. I could make quite a bit of money on eBay, eBay Motors selling these things. But what I want to do is I want to mix, I want to randomly scatter around different materials. So if I take this material and let's just go ahead and copy it. And copy and paste. So let's make this one instead of a, a red color, let's change this to kind of a, a teal. And then maybe we paste another one. And let's make this one again, let's go something that we can easily see. Let's go a green. So how could I mix these three materials across all these instances? Funny you should ask and thank you for asking. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm pulling up a material mixer. This material mixer was made for this. So what I have is I have my fix random can go in. Now actually this isn't the one I want. I want a different mixer. This is, uh, let's go material. Where are we here? Let's go here, materials. Multi-switch, that's what I wanted, multi-switch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking my random into, uh, I can take my ID index, now I want my random. And then as I pull in my materials, what I can do, I've got one input here, I double click and I said, give me another input, give me another input. I now bring this material in, bring this material in, and then finally plug this material into the others. And let's go ahead and do that instead. And so now I've got green ones, I've got blue ones, and I've got red ones. Again, flexibility. It's a co combination with the instancing and with the node editor to be able to uh, adjust placements, adjust colors, uh, adjust rotations. I mean, the whole thing is, is part of an entire system. And again, the reason that we would want to do this is because of overhead. 
if I've got a high poly object, I don't want to clone this thing 1,500, 2,000, 30,000, 100,000 times. I want to do it this way so that I'm not having to force with that, with that overhead. Now, one of the things that I'll quickly make mention of here is that if I take, let's go ahead and really simply, I'm just going to create a cube, I'm going to create a sphere, and then a torus. So torus, cube, and sphere. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, in my scene editor, I'm going to take that cube and I want to parent it to my torus and the sphere and parent it to my cube. So I'm going to stack these. So let's reset and reset. What we have as a control, as an option in our instancer, is the ability to instance hierarchies. So if I was to select this torus and quickly just run over here and grab my uh, clone instance, right now it is just pulling over the torus because it's set to uh, without the parenting hierarchy. So now it's one of those things, so if you have a tree that's got parented leaves or you've got a car that has opening doors, you don't have to worry about, you can just parent the entire hierarchy and clone that. This also comes into function and work with doing um, characters, characters that are holding objects, holding props, um, you know, because we always set up a, a, a root null, a god null, and then everything is parented to that instance of the god null, everything else will come along with it. We have offsets that uh, with motions, you, you can do a bake, I'll be showing some of that later in the, uh, with dealing with the flocking, but you can load in multiple uh, MDD files that have been baked from a, a motion so that you can randomize your motion across. Just like I randomize the color, randomize the materials, I can randomize motions. That's how you can get that, that natural feel, that natural location. Uh, under the hood, LightWave 11.5 has gone through quite a bit with its instancing engine. We've added in a lot of optimizations. We've added in uh, the more functionality, more, more feedback from the users like you guys. I'm the one who takes all of those. So when you remember that, would you, when you fire off a, a hateful mail to, to the bug report, there is a human behind that. It's me. <laughs> I have feelings too. <laughs> but we've listened to our users. We've implemented what our users wanted. That's where we're going because we want to maintain the feeling, the, the power that you are the pipeline, your concept from conception through final render, we want to give you the tools to do that. We want to make it easy. We want to make it fun. One last thing, just because I've got time, I want to go ahead and show you here. I can add in a particle emitter. And let's make this generator size zero. Let's go 10, 10. Let's make this by frame. And let's make it 1,000. And box real fast, just so that it's, it's a simple object. If I take this cube, and on my particles, I add the instancer, the instance generator bring in that cube and say on the particles so again my particles can be driven my particles can be moving and all of my instances go along with those particles so here uh, effects emitter etc let's uh, let's throw in some, just some easy motion and so all of, as my particles move my instances move. 
So the whole thing is part of it. It's reading the points, it's reading the polygons. You can have them grown on polygons, points, normals, surface, nulls. You can just, nernies, greeblies, horns, hair, grass, trees, apples, money, coins, buttons, warts. Yes, I went there. So again, very useful. I use this on a daily basis. I do. I deal with a lot of things that that want to have that depth. That we want to have that. All of those trees, all of those blades of grass, all of those birds flying through. You know, I don't. I don't want to have to deal with all of these things. I just want to deal with one. Let me deal with one and have everything else and take it from there. Take its cue from there. And for lack of getting up here and doing a little bit of a tap dance, um, so uh, again, they follow the they follow the, the placement of the of the object itself. Uh, you can separate this. You can have them local. You can have them world coordinate. You can have them positioned with with nodes. You can you can have them uh, positioned with weight maps. You can use weight maps, you can use image maps, you can use uh, distance gradients between objects, distance gradients between the pivot point of two objects to place all these things. You, you, there's all manner, all manner of different ways that you can have, uh, have these things placed and grown so that it, uh, it makes sense to you, it makes sense to you know, your particular scene. I don't want to have trees growing on the side of a rock face. This, you know, so I can set it for slope. Let's, ha let's not have it where it, you know, grows on the sides. Uh, again, um, you know, if you have it, if you have a tree object or you have a bush object that has multiple layers, all of those layers are individual objects. You have them in your instance generator. It randomizes between those. You can weight them. That's what the uh, weight control for the uh, instance generator is here. This weight right here, you can tell it, use this more than that one, use this one less than this one. So you can, you know, uh, you can have it make a little bit more of a random, but more of a controlled random on which one it's choosing. I hope you uh, want to use it a little bit more. Those of you who have 11, I hope you're using instancing. Uh, you'll definitely like it better when you get into 11.5 because we've added some of those more individual controls. It's more flexible. It's faster. You'll notice that. You'll notice also that it's a little bit more interactive with the VPR because that's been updated as well. A lot more, a lot more uh, toward the user experience because if it's not fun, why do it? We want to have fun.